this amazing woman I met actually just a few weeks ago. We were both were both health coaches, and we were both in a health coaches, you know, step up your game and 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 serve more people kind of other community where we were doing this challenge. And so it's just so wonderful and inspiring to be around other people who are doing well. Like that's that's what we want to be doing is not only in our own self and in our own lives showing up for ourselves, but also encouraging and helping and supporting other people do that. It's just a really amazing space and place to be in. And uh, I came on to her in her group and her challenge and talked about mindset and got them excited for their 30 day challenge. And I'm like, you know what? I would love to hear your story. I want to know more about you. This woman's energy is, is contagious. And I'm so excited to hear what it was like for you. What was your turning point? Like your, your kind of like magic moment where you woke up and said, I need something different. And then what is it like for you now? Amazing. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so excited to be here as well. And yes, like you rightly said, when we met, you know, I love your vibes as well. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, you will be a good person to connect with. And so I'm excited to be here today. As um, Rose had said, my name is Funmi Ajayiobe. I am based in the UK here in London. Uh, I've been living here for about 20 years or just over 20 years. And um, I started my profession as an accountant and I have been in this profession for a while. And um, when I moved to the U or when we moved to the UK, my husband, my kids, my, our family, when we moved here, um, we, I, I, I wasn't overweight or maybe I might be over, overweight, but maybe not, not actually. I think I would say I was normal weight, mm -hmm. but as the year passed by, I began to realize I was gaining weight. You know, there's one thing that actually happened. I don't think I've ever actually ever mentioned this to anybody before. I actually visited my GP that, you know, to find out because I realized at first that my tummy was huge and I'm like, I'm not pregnant. I already have three children. What could be going on? <laughs> and so I, I they carried out several tests and everything. And in the end, they were like, you're fine. There's nothing. I didn't even know. I mean, I was so ignorant about weight. And this, I, I didn't even know that maybe when you gain weight, you could actually feel like you're pregnant. And also there was another weird occasion when my colleague at work at one point like, oh, when is the baby due? Oh. Like, I'm not pregnant. And I, that got me thinking like, oh my goodness, that is really bad. That means I have really gained weight. Interestingly, I mean, coming from an African background, African men like big ladies, my husband didn't complain at all. <laughs> He's happy the way I looked. And even now he still complains that, hey, you've lost too much weight. He wants me to gain it back. Right. And um, my, but my kids were always complaining, you know, when they go to school and they go everywhere, they tell me, oh, mom, you're just so big, you're too fat, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when we had a program in church one particular year and they were like, out of all the older women, you're the youngest, but you look the oldest because you're just huge, baggy skirts, baggy dress, you know, all those kind of stuff. You don't dress nice and fancy fancifully you know and um I thought you know what I've had enough and they even say to my face the three of them will gather and they'll be talking about me and I'll be watching them and I'm like you know what okay um so I tried all sorts you know a friend invited me to a program I tried all sorts you know to cut story short and then I began to research because I thought you know at some point people will be like oh it's our African food it's this and that and so I began to research I wondered, what is this? What could it be in my African food? I've been eating this all my life. And so why would that suddenly cause a change? Mm -hmm. I mean, in hindsight, thinking back now, I feel that my weight, overweight or obesity started with the fact that, okay, I was eating my normal food, but I was also overindulging. Mm. 
um i was initially you know when i go to the store i'll be like what is this let me try this out oh apple crumb i mean apple crumble is my favorite <laughs> oh what is this oh toffee sticky toffee oh wow, wow what is you know all gradually piling up and then bad lifestyle habits you know after dinner we will have pudding after every dinner we, we, we're literally having three course meal as a normal meal you know mm -hmm. and that's it in itself it's not good because you really just need to eat when you're hungry and just eat you know so our, our lifestyle was really bad and also more so my kids were young so rushing around taking them to school piano lesson keyboard lesson swimming lesson football lesson all the different activities after school clubs you know so the last thing I did was look after my health I didn't even think that I need to Right. I was just more focused on activities and every other person but myself. Yeah. And so when I then started to do the research, I found out that, you know what? Food is food. <laughs> carbohydrates is carbohydrates in India, in China, in Nigeria, where I come from, in the UK, in America, protein is protein, fat is fat. Whatever food it is, you know, you just have to understand that you need to eat the right food. You need to understand that you need to have a good lifestyle. You need to exercise. You need to be more physically active. And, you know, because at the end of the day, my, you know, my, my forefathers, I would say, which are like great, 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 you know, they, they lived healthy lifestyles than we do nowadays. Mm -hmm. When we, when I reflect and I think about the life they lived, they would walk miles from their homes to get to the farm in the morning right on getting to the farm they are there for the whole day tilling the ground hunting for animals physically active they will pack the food go back on another couple of miles or three miles or five miles get back home they don't have microwave ovens they will <laughs> prepare the food from scratch they will pound it. I mean, where I come from, there's yams, which is similar to potatoes, and they will pound it, not mash, like mashed potato that you just use your little masher. They will literally pound. And the energy that they would use to, before they even consume the food, they've already burned a lot of the energy. Anyway, from walking and from the physical activity involved in the food. So um, it is a very um, interesting journey for me because when I reflect back and look at all those kind of things, I believe that our modern life, modern day lifestyle is the greatest reason why we are where we are today. Um, we are more sedentary. We are mostly in front of screens, be it computer, smartphone, television, playing games, whatever screen you have, it's screen is screen, but we sit, we sit down a lot. And when we sit down a lot, we are not active. We know we were not made to be sedentary. We're not made to sit down. We're, we're active human beings. We, you know, we'll probably be in the jungle walking around, eating whatever we're eating and tilling and doing all those stuff. Mm -hmm. So my journey was, you know, this is how, what, what happened. And so, when I began to research and then I, I did, I studied nutrition in the process. And then I decided that how can I help my community? Because like I said, coming from the African background, it isn't seen as something that is a bad thing. I mean, my mother come within Nigeria where I come from, there's three major tribes similar to the UK. Like in the UK, we have the Scottish, we have the Welsh mm -hmm. and the English. In Nigeria, we have the Yorubas, Igbos and Hausas. So my mom comes from the Igbo part. And in her part, there's what they call fastening room. That literally means before a bride, a woman gets married, she is preserved for, I think it's three months. She doesn't see outside at all. And she's there seated because they really want her to come out on her wedding day, beautiful, fresh. Big so she can walk. She doesn't lift a thing. Mm -hmm. They bath her. They brush her teeth. They do her hair. They do everything. So that on the wedding day, when she comes out, she is fresh. She's robust, you know, large. Because the larger, <laughs> that's what they consider to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Of course, traditions are beginning to change and people are beginning to understand that being obese is not healthy. Mm -hmm. It's not a good lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're, you're beautiful or it doesn't, in fact, it has more negative implications when you are obese. And so, um, yeah, so I, I begin to want to kind of be part of that community or be the part of the people who are bringing awareness and information and knowledge and educating and informing, uh, particularly my community, about the importance of having a healthy lifestyle, of being a good weight, because even the um, BMI consider Africans, because if you have to click your ethnicity, mm. for example, BMI should be between 18 and 24.9. If you're over 25, you're considered overweight. And if you're over 30, you're um, obese. Right. Uh, um, but for Africans, it's not 24.9, it is 23. So mm. because they say that if you are, um, you are more at greater risk, even if you think you're, I'm still under the BMI, because BMI is just a number at the end of the day, if we think right. about it, mm -hmm. we want to eat healthy lifestyle, we want to, you know, be physically active, we want to be deliberate and intentional about the kind of foods that we put in our body, and not just anything, you know, so um, it's quite important. So yeah, that's how I started the Exclusive You Nutrition and Lifestyle Improvement Program to help people achieve their nutrition and lifestyle improvement goals using their own diet. Because at the end of the day, if you are unable to achieve your weight loss goals using your own diet, I personally believe it's almost impossible for you to sustain it because when you begin to use supplements or uh, meal replacement or extreme fitness regime or whatever miracle juice or drink they give you, <laughs> there's so many of those on the internet so now. Much of it. I know. So many, they're telling you this, drink this within 24 hours, you'll be size 10 or something like that. And, and I, I, you know, if you we, re we live in the real world. We need to be able to understand food and use our own food to achieve a goal. So I believe that if you're able to understand that, okay, this is me, these are the kind of food I like. I like cheese, I like avocado, I like this and that. So be it, there's nothing wrong in eating those, you know. Understand what you like and understand the nutrients and the how, how to balance it and your lifestyle, know how much activities that you need to do, what kind of work job you do. You need to understand that. So, uh, and that's why I started the program to help people to, to use their own diet, like I call it all the time, using your own diet, whatever that might be, whether yeah. you're an American, a British, whatever food you eat. Because at the end of the day, diet really is what you eat on a regular basis. It's not somebody's diet that they give to you on paper and tell you this is what you should eat. Yeah. What if I don't like that food? What if it's not something I fancy? Then I have to stick with that all the rest of my life because yeah. I want to maintain a certain weight. No way, I want to eat what I enjoy. And of course, in life, you know, we live in the real world. There will be times, there will be occasion, Christmas is coming. You've only just recently finished your Thanksgiving celebration. And there's going to be occasion where you fancy having a piece of cake or whatever. Hey, life is too short. Enjoy it if you have to. We don't have to restrict ourselves to, you know, oh, we have to just go in this way. There is no one way. You just have to understand something in the means uh, using your own way, you know, something that works well for you. Whatever you choose to do, it has to be sustainable. It has to be uh, so scientifically proven, you know, medically okay. It has to be something that matches your lifestyle, so mm -hmm. something you can consistently do and manage so that it's not just a challenge, but it's a lifestyle. So that's why I call it lifestyle improvement program because you're improving yourself, improving your lifestyle. And um, yeah, so that's how I got into um, the program. I hope I haven't said too much or too, <laughs> not sure where you want me to stop, but yeah, um, that's how I got uh, to where I am now. And I have been doing this for 10 years. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, here I am. Here you are just so amazing. I tuned into your workout session that you had in your group the other day and girl, I, you were on fire. I wasn't in a place where I could work out, but I was like, I was going like this with you. And I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta put this down. I gotta, I gotta go. 
it was just so inspiring. I mean, the kind of energy that's around it that you bring to this space is so healing. It's so necessary. It's so easy for us to get caught up in like the blame and the shame and the disappointment and wanting it to be different and the struggle year after year and being really focused on like, you know, if I just did it like this and if I, you know, I see everyone else losing weight and I need to lose weight because I need to feel okay or I need to whatever. And it's so, it's, that's such a, a depriving and like suffocating kind of way to think. And that's really what I was hearing you saying. It has so much to do around our minds and the way that we think about our bodies, the way in which we are showing up for ourselves and our families, what it is that we're actually thinking when we're eating the food. In fact, we, they've done plenty of studies now because we're like in the time of science and studying stuff that the damage that is created in the body when we are stressing over whatever that food that is, or that like, oh, I'm such a naughty girl. I shouldn't be doing this. This is so bad. I'm never going to do it again. Wait, I need to finish it all. That head trip actually does more damage to the, bo to the body than that piece of cake did. Right. And on the flip side, if we're just sitting in our house miserable because, you know, we can't think beyond or give ourselves permission beyond steamed broccoli, then that's not really doing ourself or our life or our sense of freedom, like any, any, any justice either. Right. Like I, I it was such a revelation when I first kind of, when it dawned on me and I realized I'm like, wait a minute, how? is it that I really think that, you know, restriction and control is going to give me a sense of freedom and peace? Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any logical sense when you say it like that, but we get into that like diet mentality when we don't have people like you to look at us and go, you're beautiful. You're wonderful. Yes. Get off your butt and move. Yes. Drink the water. Yes. Eat the fresh, alive and vibrant foods and smile. You're okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see with the fitness thing, you know, I believe that sometimes, you know, people need to just see somebody doing something, you know, whether it be one person or two person, two people, you know, it encourages you. I mean, like somebody uh, posted today and during, I had a live session just before joining you, you now. And, you know, somebody said, you know what, I, I they detest fruits. They don't like fruits and vegetables at all. And the point is fruits and vegetables are the ones that give you all the vital nutrients, the vitamins, the, you know, the, the nutrients that you need. And, but there's a particular person in the group, she posts every day her meal and everything and her juice and how she's done, converted her fruits into smoothie. And they looked really nice. She presents them so well. And so this person said, you know what? Now I actually see I'm eating more fruits and, you know, I'm consuming them. And so it does encourage. And so that's why I decided, you know, with the video, I thought, you know what? It's exercise, it's let's just do it. These people will complain, oh, it's it's raining, I can't go to the gym. We give excuses when we don't want to do things. <laughs> oh, it's it's dark, you know, it's snow, whatever it might be. But the point is, dark. okay, <laughs> exactly, I'm tired. Okay, now it's I'm in your screen. We, technology can allow us to do anything we want to do indoors. So hey, why not? You know, let's just do something, just keep you your body moving. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, another thing I feel is that people want something to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. When you start, just start somewhere. Yeah. You don't expect somebody who was born today to begin to walk. You know, there's a process where they begin to open their eyes, they smile, they giggle, they will crawl, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. walk, they stumble, they walk again, and then they take another step. So there is a process to everything in life. So whenever we are starting, we want to change our life, we want mindset, we want to improve anything, there is a process. We don't have to get it perfect in one go. We just have to start and keep doing it and keep doing it. You know, repetition, once you repeat and repeat, you become a master of that, you know, then you improve and then you get better and then you understand and then you learn from mistakes because there is no perfect person. When you do something, you learn that, oh, that didn't quite work well for me today. Let me do something different. Let me change that. Let me amend and improve and modulate, you know, let me do something. Let me do it differently and try, you know. Uh, and so my, my daughter tried to mix. She did some sea moss, whatever, today. So she brought it out. She's like, oh, mommy, didn't, could this quite go well? No, I didn't do this well. It was bad. I'm like, no, you learn from that. That's improved. 
because she wanted to do a, a, a chocolate flavor or whatever flavor yeah. she was trying to do because yeah. she's trying to combine health and a bit of sweetness little, so yeah. i said don't worry because she only put a little tiny so i said it's fine what, what do you think that that could be a spread it doesn't have to be a whatever you can make it a spread and that's it so it is good you learn from that yeah. there's this licorice sweets which um, when I read the pack, you know, one some years ago, I realized that actually that sweet came as a mistake. Mm. The factory, they, pro they produced the licorice sweets and it fell off and then they all mixed different colors. So I think they were originally meant to be one particular color per pack mm -hmm. and then they all fell in the factory and then it comes, so they call it all sorts. I don't know whether you have it in the US. Doesn't sound familiar. Oh, okay. It's here in the UK. They call it all sorts licorice. It tastes nice. They're different flavors and different color, different shapes. They all is just like broken biscuits somehow, but they look nice. And it, it, it is, it's a top brand, you know, today. Whereas if that person that made the mistake thinks, oh my goodness, I made such a mess of yeah. this. But that mess now is something that it's making millions of or billions, for however much revenue they're making in the company. So yeah, we should learn that, you know, we, we, we're improving, we're, we're work in progress. We're improving and improving on a daily basis. So we may not be perfect today, but once you start, you will get to your destination. Rome was not built in a day like the saying goes. So yeah. <laughs> it sure wasn't. Oh girl, I can literally talk to you for hours. I do have a one third, I, I gotta go. Um, I thank you so much for being part of my group, for allowing me in your group. I know this is not the end of our conversations. If anyone would like to reach out to you personally, is that okay if they just click on your name and, and go and friend you and, and search out and see what you're doing? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm available online. Click on my name, you'll find me. Or if you just go on the exclusive view on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, um, I'm trying to be now uh, aware, uh, available on, uh, what do you call it now? LinkedIn as well. So yeah. Ooh, girl, you know, so. <laughs> out there helping people in any way. I know LinkedIn and Twitter is something I'm like, yeah, I think I need to be there as well, you know, just being where, where the people are. So yeah, you will find me there. That's Thank right. You. Just spreading spreading the good news, really. I mean, oh, there's nothing better than surrounding yourself with like-minded people that are either a step ahead of you or at least on the same path, right? Because there's a lot of distractions. There is, you could go in any which way that you choose to, but if you're going in the direction of health and vitality, if you're going in the direction of lifting the weight off of your mind and off of your shoulders, lifting the weight off of your heart and your body, then you are someone that I want in my corner because that is, that is my goal for the rest of the rest of my days. Oh, thank you. Um, every day of my life, I'm going to have this body and this mind to take care of. And I just love you in my corner. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Rose. In fact, you are a superstar as well. And I want to say this to your group. They are so privileged to have someone like you. Like I said, when I first saw you, you are like, I love her vibes. I just love this lady. I would like to connect with her. So you having her all this while, especially those of you who have known her for years, you are so privileged. She's such an amazing, you know, talented, skilled. I was listening to your, um, in fact, I listened to it again today, to your um, your meditation. <laughs> yeah, with, with the week five thing, it's just a beautiful, a beautiful thing. You know, your voice and, you know, I'm like, yeah, this is what I need. Where have I been all these years? And also I have missed misinformation mis about things like that. I didn't even understand, you know, like I asked you a, a, the question, like, what does all this hypnotherapy? I didn't get it. What has it been going to charm me and things like that? I'm like, wow, I'm missing this. It's beautiful. So thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited that I was able to make it tonight that I'm here in your midst. And yeah, hopefully we'll meet again, have another session another time. So absolutely. 100,000%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, lovey. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you Thank soon. You. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.